Welcome back to Captain of Industry. Today we will cover everything there is to know about pipes and conveyor belts, including of course, balancers and sorters. This is a great tutorial for new players, but I'm also going to cover many advanced tips and tricks, so please make sure you stay even if you know the basics. And if you know the basics, don't hesitate to use the chapter functionality below to jump to the part that may interest you the most. We're going to cover each type of those pipes and belts, their differences, advantages, disadvantages. I'm also going to cover how to go up and down, what is the minimum distances where you can go up and down between different pipes and belts. Spoiler alert, this is different between belts and pipes and you may not know that. We're also going to cover balancers and sorters. I'm going to explain how they work and I'm going to show you a number of use cases. And then lastly, as I said, I'm also going to cover a number of tips and tricks along the way. If you want to see more of Captain of Industry, both in terms of Let's Play and Guides, I have all of this on my channel. Check the video description below if you want to see them. And if at any time of the video you feel this is useful, don't hesitate to smash the like button so that the YouTube algorithm knows to share this with more Captain of Industry fan out there. Okay, so diving in all of the belts, pipes, balancer, you can find them by pressing T or here at the bottom. There's three levels for the flat conveyor, three levels for the U-shaped conveyor, only one level for the molten channel, we're gonna discuss that just now, three level for the pipe, and then a couple of balancers and sorters. As I said, the one that's very different from everything else, so we'll cover right away, is the molten channel. The molten channel is used mostly from your blast furnaces, creates for example the molten iron or the molten copper, and there is only one level. You unlock it right from the start and you have one level up to the end of the game. This also only costs you the construction part level one, so easy to build. While it is only one level, level one if you wish, it is 120 throughput per minute. It's actually double what normal pipes or normal conveyor can do because these are 60 per minute. This is how it looks when built. You can see the arrow is showing you in which way it's going. Of course, you can toggle the direction if you want it to go the other way. And one very particular thing about this molten channel, it's, it's really built inside the ground. If you press E a couple of times, you can actually build those molten channels above the ground. But the problem is you'll never be able to connect it. Because if you are on the ground, you know, you and you press E, it doesn't go up. The molten channels in reality can only really function on the ground and that's why in my opinion you should always start your build if you have a build that requires molten channel just put this one first because they need to be on the ground so let's get them out of the way and then you can build your pipes and your conveyors on top of them now let's talk about the pipes because they are also slightly different from the u-shape and the flat conveyors the main difference that they have is that they can only transport one item one type of item at a time meaning in a single pipe like this you cannot have water and brine at the same time in the pipe it doesn't mean you can't do something like this where for example i have my water coming over here continuing and then going this way and then brine coming this way and going that way you can still do that but what will happen is that this will be full of water this will be full of brine and then at some point, all of the water will go here and no brine at all. Then the water will go this way. And then when this is empty, then the brine will go and will go this way. So basically it's sort of a stop and go system, which doesn't really work well. So I do suggest you avoid that and you actually create one pipe per resource. And this is why also you see there is no sorter for the liquid. There's only sorters for the U-shape and the flat um, conveyors because this is where you can definitely have several resources mixed into one. For the pipe, again, it doesn't really work well. Apart from that, the pipes are actually quite similar to the flat conveyor and U-shaped conveyor in the sense that they have three levels. First level is 60 per minute, the second 200, and the third 450. So really increases quite a lot. They of course also cost you more resources. You start with the normal construction parts, then you move to the gold parts, and lately, to the red the level three construction parts visually if you haven't built them you can see that you know, the radius of the pipe increases this is level one level two and level three which you can see here at the top it does increases so you can see that when you've built it you can still see that the radius is different but you can also see the color you go from gray to blue to red so that's easy to really see 
you can of course also toggle the di direction as we said before now for the flat and the u-shaped conveyor we also have three levels this is the same 60 200 450 60 200 450 you can see when you haven't built them it is actually in my opinion impossible to see a difference between uh, the levels right this is level one two and three i actually don't see a level a difference do tell me in the comments if you do see a difference what you can see though is the difference between a u-shape here and a flat one the start and finish of the belt you can see it is a difference this one is clearly a bit flatter when you've built them this is even easier right they definitely look very different you can once again see the color difference gray blue and red gray blue and red you can also see the shape and this one definitely has sort of a u-shape this is going to be inside versus this one is flat this is going to be transported on top you can see the direction on this one each of the chevron is showing you the direction you can toggle it and for this one this is inside right you can see the arrow similarly like this small difference that while you unlock pipe level one and the modern channel basically right at the start your conveyor belts only come over here after you've unlocked the goal parts the construction part level two while your pipe level one only costs construction part the normal one level one your u-shape directly costs gold parts and rubber then you move directly for level two to the construction part level three and still some rubber and then for the final one you basically just increase the amount of gold, red parts and rubber and it's the same for the flat conveyors now you may be wondering can i mix different levels you definitely can as you can see here it starts with the level one goes to level two then three it starts with level three goes to two goes to one you can also go from three to one directly that's not a problem in a case like this this definitely seems like a waste because basically what will happen that this will go very fast then it will slow down and this will slow down even more so what will happen is that this will get full very quickly then this will get full and then finally this will get full because you know this is trying to push too much versus this is the limit so in this case like there's just a straight line it doesn't make a lot of sense but actually in practice it often makes a lot of sense to have different levels because different levels cost you different amount of money right so you shouldn't just overspend if you're fine having just a level one you shouldn't build a level two or level three let me show you an example for example here i can show you a couple of examples of where i've done it right and where i've also done it wrong Let's start over here with that pipe, that red pipe. I have three of these seawater pump here connected through that pipe. The, each of these is 120, right? So for that pipe over here, this is 360. This is of course bigger than the pipe level two can do. This can only do 200. So it definitely should be a red one over here. This is definitely a good idea. And then when I get over here, you know, this is split, right? Some of it will go this way. Some of it will go that way. 120 will go this way because this is 60 plus 60 so this is totally fine to have a blue one right this is max at 200 so 120 is totally fine but then there's more than 200 that's still left over here so red one is important over here and then this again so 120 that's going to go over here so it's good to have a blue one but now talking about you know what's wrong well, for example, here I have a red one. I don't need a red one. I actually need a blue one. There's only 120 going over here. And then here I actually have a blue one where I could only have a normal pipe like this because there's only 60 going into this one, right? This split into this one and that one. So 60 this way, 60 this way. So this could be a normal one like this one. This one also should be a normal one. Another example is here. I have this red pipe because I'm making a lot of steam. I'm making a lot of steam coming through five of these. This is five times 48. You know, this is more than 200. So I need a red pipe over here. But then for each of those thermal desalinator, I only need 12, right? So for these ones over here, I don't need a red or blue. A normal pipe level one is totally fine. So if you look at a large layout like this, you can see I have a mix of red, blue and uh, gray. If I had put red all the way everywhere, this would have definitely cost me a lot more money. And for the conveyor belts, it's even worse because there is another difference we haven't mentioned between conveyor belts and pipes. It is the electricity need. All of my pipes, you know, when they function or when they don't function, they don't need electricity. It's just because of pressure. You know, at the beginning, there's 
something that pushes the water or pushes the liquid and it goes down the pipe in a sense. Versus for the conveyor belts, we need electricity to make them move. And the higher the level, the more electricity you need, which also makes sense, right? If this is supposed to push 450 per minute, that means you need to push a lot more, a lot quicker, a lot more stronger, right? So more electricity. This one, for example, is only two. This one is five for basically the same distance. So again, you're, you would be overspending in terms of resources, but also in terms of electricity. And you may be saying, yeah, well, five is not a lot. Sure, it's not a lot, but when you have pipe all over your city, like I have over here, you know, this is conveyors everywhere. Also a very long conveyor, like this one is 45 just for level two. If I were to upgrade to level three, a lot of resources as you can see, and on top of that also a lot more electricity. So do try to optimize which level you're using, to make sure that you can transport enough resources, but not too much either. Now let's talk quickly about the tools. When you're trying to build a new conveyor belt, it starts at height zero. If you press E, it will go to height one, E again, I2, E again, I3. You actually are able to go to I4, we're going to talk about it just now, but not by pressing E. If you press E again, it will be blocked at I3. And then to go down, it's Q. You go down to level 2, 1, and 0. Two other important shortcuts are the R button and the F button. Basically, if you don't have them selected, what will often happen is something like this. I'm trying to make this pipe go over here. And because I don't have the F button, it's trying to go around this pipe here. This is if I press F, then it's fine. I can go here, no problem. So without F, it does this. With F, I can go straight. And R, it will basically try to connect directly to it. This is if I unpress R, it won't try to connect the pipe. Now that we know how to go up and down, let's discuss how we can do something like this, where we have you know, three belts on top of each other and then all going straight into my factories and one important element here is that it is actually different for the pipe versus the conveyors it's the same for u-shape and flat conveyors but different for the pipe we put one at level zero over here then we're going to go to height one and we are going to press r otherwise if you don't press r you know it tries to connect so we press r this way it doesn't connect it's level one now if you have all of those conveyors on top of each other and you're trying to go down either to connect to a, a factory you know an industry or also to do something else it could be that you're connecting to a balancer or a sorter for example you have two options one is you want to make it very clean where you're going straight right like straight like this and then there's definitely a minimum distance that we're going to talk about another way is you don't really care about you know going straight maybe you think it's actually prettier to do something like this and then the distance is definitely different Right? You can see this was straight. Now, if I go around, you know, I can make a shorter distance. But let's talk first about going straight. Obviously, if you are at level zero, you know, there's no distance. You, you can go straight right away. Now, if you're at level one, it will take you for a belt three tiles. You know? and the way it is counted is actually one tile to get out and then two tiles per level. Here we're at level one, that means one plus two. Now, if I go to level two, this will be therefore five, right? One, two, three, four, five, because this is one plus two times two, so that's five. And then for level three, this is going to be seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, this is the same for the flat conveyors, but this is only if you want to go straight, which often looks really good, but you don't always have to go straight. For example, here for my farms, I thought this looked even better than going straight. You know, I have my flat conveyors here at level two that goes into two tiles this way and two tiles that way. And then similarly, sort of the symmetrical shape for the one at level three. I thought that looked even better than straight. So again, seven, five and three and what about the pipes because as i said the pipes are different so let's quickly build it so level zero of course as always it's easy then level one it actually takes you only two tiles level two only three and level three only four there's just one more tile versus the level 
but the only thing to remember is again this is seven five and three this is this is only four three two and in particular what it means that i told you at the beginning start with your molten channel the molten channel needs to be on the floor then because these ones the higher they are the more space they're going to take you then put your conveyors your flat conveyor or your u-shaped conveyors at level you know one two for example and then keep the pipes for the higher level or level three or even four because yes as i said you can go to level four so you cannot go at level four by just pressing e you will be blocked at level three but if you are at level three and you try to go above another level three is going to level four just to go above and then goes back to level three it's not like you can make a super long level four but you can definitely do it you can see it for example i have level zero one two and three and then this one is level four going just above and then going back to level three now let's talk about the balancers first the theory and then how i use it it's the same theory for the flat balancer the u-shaped balancer the molten one and the pipe i know a couple of people have asked in the past why the molten is useful i also cover that but before i cover the two scenario where you want to use a pipe balancer let me show you where you don't want to use a pipe balancer if you are in a scenario where you have different pipes for example you're bringing water from your desalination plant and you're bringing water from rainwater harvesters at the same time and you just want to have those two inputs go into a single pipe you don't need a pipe balancer you know this will just automatically create a connector like this and whatever is coming is going to go this way of course based on the maximum right this is maximum 60 so if this is pushing 60 and 60 then it will be blocked and but you just have to upgrade this then to the next level and then you'll be fine in that case you don't need a pipe balancer in particular because all of the balancers pipe or conveyors they take some electricity they use electricity 5 kilowatts of electricity so this will be a waste to put a balancer when you don't need it there is two scenarios where you may want a pipe balancer the first one is to enforce strict even output or input or both of these by toggling these two over here the second is if you want to put a priority either in or out let me explain let's say that for example i have water coming from here could be coming from once again a desalination plan or anything else doesn't matter i have some water coming in and i want to send it to farms for example to make it simple let's say to two different farms this one is one farm this one is a second farm and i know that i'm not producing enough water right now i have a problem not producing enough water but i want to make sure that each of those two farms is getting the same amount of water you know it's not like one farm is getting everything and the other farm is getting nothing i want to make it strictly even and that's why and in that case i'm going to toggle this one over here in for strictly even output and in that way this is where a balancer is kind of useful especially if i have more than two you know if i have four different farms and have four pipes then anytime for example four water is coming in one will go in each of these but to be honest i use the balancers a lot more for the priority the prioritization that you can see here once again, this can work for the input or output. It doesn't matter. Here, I'm going to show you first an example for the input, and then I'll show you an example for the output. In this example over here, I have water that's coming from over here and from over here. I have two ins and one out, which is this one over here. This in over here is the water that I'm creating from the steam depleted transform back into water. Versus this one is my main water pipe. You know, it's coming from my desalination plants. So here I have a lot of water, here I just have a bit of water. But what's very important is I don't want water to accumulate over here. I don't want the water to be stuck and the steam to get stuck and therefore the whole thing to stop. So I want to make sure in this balancer that this is priority. Whatever water comes over here, I want to make sure it is sent out. And then if I don't have enough water, then this is fine. Whatever is needed will come from this main pipe. This is what the priority is. I'm enforcing that all of the water that is here goes out first before any water comes from here. Now a similar example for the priority out. I'm producing here a lot of nitrogen. This is my in and then I have two outs. One out is going over here into this chemical plant and then the second out is going over here into those smokestacks. What is happening here is that I'm producing more nitrogen, 
or maybe sometimes I know I won't be using all of the nitrogen. For example, if this is full, like here, right, my liquid nitrogen is full, so this will stop, right? And in that case, I don't want the whole thing to stop because if this whole thing stops, if I have too much nitrogen, then I won't produce uh, oxygen. And I want to continue to produce oxygen because oxygen is used somewhere else. So in that case, I want to make sure that first we send whatever nitrogen we can to the chemical plant, but then if it's left or if the chemical plant is full, then we must send it into the smokestack over here. And this leads me to something very important about the balancers, both for the pipes, but also for the others as always, is that you always need the pipe or in the case of, of course, the flat balancer or the U-shaped balancer, you need a conveyor to go in and out. You cannot connect things directly to it. For example, here, if I have one tile pipe, that will work. But if I put the stack directly over here, it won't work. As you can see here, it recognizes a priority out. Here, it doesn't recognize anything. This will never work. So you also can't do something like this because then it won't recognize the other pipe. If you need to put another balancer next to it, you need to leave one tile like this. And in that case, now it recognizes it. Now, you may be wondering why you would want to have several balancers like this. Well, there is actually a reason, at least in the current version where I'm recording this video, maybe this will be fixed in the future. Let me show you an example over here where I would have actually wanted to put two. I didn't because I was a bit lazy, but two would be useful. Here I have three different outs, right? This one is a priority. The reason is the priority to give you a bit of context is this is my iron going into the mechanical parts and the mechanical parts are critical for the maintenance. Right, so this is why this is the priority. I want to make sure that this is always full before I send anything over here. But what's a bit of a problem is that I cannot say this is priority one, this is two, and this is three. The only thing I can say is that this is priority one and everything else is priority two. Meaning that first this needs to get to get full and then whatever is left will be split between those two equally, right? Now, there may be scenarios where you want to really say this needs to be priority one, this needs to be priority two, this needs to be priority three. And in that case, the only way to do it is to actually have two pipe balancers. I know this is a bit complex and ugly, but bear with me. This is an example where I've actually put two pipe balancers. You can see here, I have two priorities. This one is the priority out because I want, first of all, all of my hydrogen in this case to go into those fracking units for the AV oil. This is really the priority number one. Then whatever is left, I'm sending on that pipe over here into this other balancer. And then I again have two out. Basically means that whatever is left, please send it first into this other cracking unit, which is a cracking unit for my NAFTA in this case. But then if anything is left, I don't want this whole system to get full and therefore I have this flare over here. Right? This is priority three. This is sort of last resort. But this is about the balancers. Now, before we talk about the sorters, I want to give you a couple of tips in particular about the connectors. As soon as you connect two pipes or two conveyors, they will automatically create a connector. One thing that is actually important to know is that those connectors actually have an unlimited capacity or speed if you wish. Here, this is a level one, this is a level two. This is not either level one or level two. Whatever level are coming in, coming out, you will always just see connector. This is an unlimited. So the output won't be blocked by this. It will be blocked either by the input or the output. And you can use that with a great tip I want to show you now, which is let's create one connector. And then we're going to put a smoke stack. Could be a small or a big one on it. Doesn't really matter. We'll put the same on the other side. We could even put a third one if we wanted. But once you've built it, it can become very easy to actually place it on the building. You may be wondering why. Well, for example, let's take this exo scrubber. In this exo scrubber, I'm creating 72 carbon dioxide. This is quite a lot. In particular, this is more than what one smokestack, a small one, can do. The one thing you can do is put just a big one. That costs you more resources. That's also going to take quite a bit of space, right? It's four spaces. Or the other thing you can do is start with the pipe level two, not level one, level two, because remember, this is more than 60. And then you're going to do something like this. You're going to put your smokestack. Then you're going to take another pipe like this. And then you're going to put another smokestack, right? 
which again takes you a lot of space also costs you quite a bit of resources because you need pipes level 2 now what you can actually do is you just copy what we made here and just plug it directly into it in this case we don't even need a third one we only need two this doesn't cost any resources and has unlimited capacity and therefore it will definitely make all of those two things work no problem and it takes a lot less space as you can see similarly you often want to put buildings as close as possible but sometimes you may have issues connecting them in this case one thing you can do is like this you connect to one side then you click again and connect to the other side what you can also do is have one of those collectors uh, already somewhere in your city you know you can have a reserve of all of the connectors and you copy it and then you just place it in the middle and then you can easily go this way or that way wherever you you please another question i've often had is how do you do when you have two inputs or outputs that are very close to each other how do you connect them easily well you actually have two solutions the first one is quite easy is you do one as i said before you always start with your conveyors before your pipe so let's do the, the conveyor like this and the other you know is the pipe you'll put it at level one and because the pipe is so easy to go in and out as you'll see you'll be able to connect not just on top but one tile apart right so that is not a problem you could even do it on the ground if you wanted for example if you wanted to go on the other side let me show you, you know, we can do it with one tile but the other way you can do it is once again with the copy tool in that case we can just put it straight which is often you know takes less space and it's more pretty and then you copy this one back again it will be fine these are two different types of connectors so they won't connect to each other on the other hand we cannot do something like this where it's the same types of connectors then that won't work that will start to create bugs basically they will you know they won't know what to do and then the last thing i wanted to mention before we talk about the sorters is when you delete a pipe or a belt what happens is that some trucks are sent to pick up the resources of the belt right but also the resources that are on the belt and then they're going to deliver it somewhere what you usually do though is you use unity and then when you do that what happens is that this is sent directly to your shipyard you do have to be careful with that because what you can do is can overload with your shipyard which means that then you're not able to deliver anything from your boat so that is a problem what is very good is that recently the dev have added a discard option i click here and i click discard you know this has disappeared now i can also do it over here you know. so you can do that if you want otherwise of course what you can do is create another storage next to it right and then here you put export priority one or two and keep empty or something like this and then they will deliver immediately to it but now let's talk about the sorters as i said previously there's only a sorter for the flat conveyor and the u-shaped conveyor because this is where you can have in the same belt many different things for example here you can see i have both glass mix and broken glass in the same belt that's not a problem at all or here i have corn and potato in the same belt not a problem either in terms of the theory it's pretty easy basically a sorter has one input and two outputs and you're going to choose which product needs to be filtered if i choose bread over here for example what it means is that i have many resources that will come here then all of the bread will go this way and everything else will continue this way you can also press f to change the direction if you want but that's pretty much it this is how a sorter works it also takes a bit of electricity less than the balancers but still some so here for example is a concrete example i have a lot of different things soybean potato corn and others coming first all of the soybean is going to be sent this way everything else continues over here then all of the wheat is going to be sent that way then everything continues over here then all of the potatoes are sent this way and then everything continues this way because there's only this is everything else <laughs> so you can see here sort of the first user of a sorter I want all of my resources to come into one belt for example all of the things coming from one farm on this one belt but then of course I want to do different things with each of those different resources for example the soybean I want to send it into the food processor the wheat into the meal on that side etc that's the first usage for example this is one place where I could have used sorters I didn't because I thought it was super cool like this but I definitely could where you know I have many belts going from where I'm producing the food to where it's going to be used over here. 
right? Right now, each resource has its own belt. What I could do is put all of them on the same belt, right? It goes all the way over here, same belt. And when it arrives over here, then I start sorting it, right? I send the meat over here. Then I send the tofu over here, right? So I'm putting different balancers over there. In my opinion, the molten balancer doesn't have a lot of usage, but let me show you an example of one. Let's say that you only have the resources to build two blast furnaces. Open one or level two doesn't really matter. And with those blast furnaces, you want to make molten iron. And the molten iron can be used either in a metal caster or in an oxygen furnace, right? In this one to make the iron, in this one to make the steel. What you can do with a molten balancer is that you send all of the molten iron that you're making into the balancer. And then you can have one output this way for the iron, one output this way for the steel. And then if you are low on iron, you can prioritize the iron. If you're low on steel, you can prioritize the steel, which means that sort of all of your production will go into one thing very quickly instead of being, you know, half half and you don't have the flexibility to decide which one to prioritize. OK, I tried to cover everything from the basic to the advanced tips on all of the pipes, conveyors, balancers and sorters. But don't hesitate if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll try to do my best to answer directly in the comments or also to do another video if needed. And if this was useful, please do smash the like button. I hope to see you next time.